The words of the Bible aren't always as clear-cut as they appear to be. Countless scribes have spent thousands of years deciphering and working with old manuscripts that don't always say the same thing as the Bibles that we have today. The slightest typo or mistranslations can completely change the way millions of people live their lives. Here are 10 Bible verses that have been changed in some way. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and I just want to say that this episode is intended to highlight verifiable variations and mistranslations and so on in the Bibles that we know today and not intended to interfere with anyone's religious beliefs. Let's jump in at number 10, let he who is without sin. There's a famous story of Jesus drawing a line in the sand between a woman and the Pharisee who wanted to stone her to death for committing adultery. In most Bibles, it shows up in John chapter 7 verses 53 up until John chapter 8 verses 11. And this quote is seen there, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And how it's exactly written varies between the different versions of the Bible. However, the oldest copies of the Gospel of John don't have that story. It doesn't actually appear until the 5th century AD, about 400 years after Jesus. The first text to include this story is a Greek and Latin translation of the Gospels called Codex Bize. Number 9. Women remain silent in church. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 contains a passage that says women should remain silent in the churches. And if they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. But the same chapter of the Bible calls both brothers and sisters to prophesy and speak in tongues. So of course, this verse has been a topic of debate for a long time because it's saying don't speak in church and it's saying, well, you're allowed to speak. Now, a 4th century manuscript of the book of Corinthians has a note in the margins next to these verses saying that they are a later edition that weren't originally in the book. And in other early manuscripts, these verses show up in different parts of the Bible completely. On the flip side though, it's possible that this line is an original line and that people have been trying to erase it over time since there's no manuscript that doesn't contain those lines somewhere in them. Moving on to the Lord's Prayer at number 8. There's a day that Jesus and his disciples were speaking and they asked him, teach us how to pray. And when he said, you pray like this, he said something that nobody is completely certain of what he actually said. Because the Lord's Prayer is actually probably one of the parts of the Bible that have been changed the most throughout the different translations. There are a lot of lines that nobody is 100% sure of. For example, the line, Thy Kingdom Come, in some early versions, the Bible actually reads, May your Holy Spirit come upon us and purify us. Also, the line that says, lead us not into temptation, is sometimes translated as, do not let us fall into temptation. And people say that the latter is more accurate because saying it the other way makes God sound like he leads people onto the path of sin. And there's many other changes to the Lord's Prayer. But we move on to number seven, unicorn. The book of Numbers 23 verses 22 reads, God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. But not everybody agrees that the original Hebrew word re'em means unicorn. Re'em means single horned creature. And it could refer to any horned creature like rhinoceroses or oxen. And the King James Version of the Bible still says unicorn though, while other translations, they just use the term wild ox. So that's another change there. Next up, Sodomites in Israel. This is found in Deuteronomy 23 verses 17 to 18, and it seems to outrightly condemn homosexuality. It reads, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. Now the word sodomite here doesn't actually fit the context in the verse. The original word has the meaning closer to male prostitute, and it doesn't explicitly refer to homosexuality. In the original Hebrew, it seems to condemn male prostitutes and female prostitutes, and not necessarily a direct outright attack on homosexuals. Halfway in at number five, these three are one, probably one of the biggest changes here. When someone denies that Jesus is God, one of the most common verses used to prove it is 1 John 5 verses 7 to 8. And the King James Version reads, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. However, in the oldest manuscripts, the verse is a lot shorter and it reads, There are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. These three agree. 
Now the extra lines don't show up until about the 4th century, which is around the time that the Trinity Doctrine was approved. Number four, the fool says there is no God. This is taken from the book of Psalms chapter 14, and it talks about the fool who says that there is no God and criticizes them for acting selfish and corrupting the people and focus on themselves and overlook the poor people. Now, depending on the version of the Bible that you read, it goes a lot further. Some earlier English translations of the Bible are harsher and they say their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and unhappiness is their ways and the way of peace have they not known. Now it's a big difference to go from saying that these evildoers, they frustrate the plans of the poor and they overlook them, which is pretty much saying that an atheist would be insensitive to the poor, rather than leaving the notion that they're just out plotting to shed people's blood. None of the words about atheists plotting to shed blood is found in the earliest manuscripts. Prayer and fasting comes next at number three. After Jesus cast out the demon of an epileptic man, his disciples asked him how he did it, and in the book of Mark chapter 9 verses 29 and Matthew chapter 17 verses 21, he says this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. However, some manuscripts just say prayer. Now the oldest one found only says prayer, so many people think that the word fasting was added by a scribe later on, but no one really knows for sure. Number two, the firstborn. Now Matthew chapter 1 verses 25 says that Jesus is Mary's firstborn, but only in some translations of the Bible. In others, it says that Jesus is a son. Now, a lot of Catholics believe that Mary remained a virgin for her whole life, even after supernaturally giving birth to Jesus. Now, there are other parts of the Bible, though, where Jesus actually meets up with his siblings, but some Catholics say that those stories are translation errors. Now, the original Greek manuscripts use the word adelphos to refer to Jesus' siblings, which could also be translated as cousin rather than just brother. So in the oldest manuscripts though, the book of Matthew uses the word for firstborn son instead of just simply calling it a son. And now a lot of people believe that the word firstborn was deliberately taken out and replaced by people who wanted to believe that Mary remained a virgin her whole life. Now for number one, the desire to your husband or not? In 2016, there's a group of scholars that put together the English Standard Version or the ESV of the Bible and the claim was made that every word was translated flawlessly and nothing would ever need to be changed. But in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis 3 verses 16, it says, Thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. But in the ESV translation, it reads, Your desire shall be contrary to your husband and he shall rule over you. So the ESV translation tells women that they should pretty much accept not being able to see eye to eye ever with their spouse. So would the desire of women be to the man or should it say the desire of the woman will be against the man. Either way guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. This was a look at 10 Bible verses that were changed in some way, shape, or form. I want to know your thoughts and comments down below about anything that I shared in this video. If you did enjoy this one, don't forget to leave a like. And if this is your first time here at FTD Facts, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell. We post videos daily similar to this. So if you enjoyed this one, definitely can't wait to see you all in the next episodes.